and welcome. In this video series, I would like to give you an overview of the influence of interference pattern in a coil system. The coil system is based on the non-related magnetic flux. So we have counter running windings on our coil. We use it as an example. We use the DC power supply to feed DC into the system, which we can drive then LED with. However, we are not connecting any ground here on our transistor here, from which the signal generator is providing um, the signal 4 volt peak to peak from in a 50 ohm. And I have a 1 mega ohm res uh, resistor here, which is currently at 150 um, kilo ohm. And I can uh, change that. I, you can see I can adapt that. So if I keep that here at that. Meet 11 is a bit difficult to see. So we are at that level currently. I will zoom in now on what we are currently producing on the power supply. So the power supply measures 6 volt and 1 milliampere. That means you can see here on the right hand side 7 milliwatt. That is what is currently. Uh, fed into the system and we measure 7 milliwatt on the output side currently and we have um, the signal coming from here which has a very low value. So we can interfere that you can see if I switch off the power supply, DC power supply it's gone. And what we are left over is with a pure signal of the signal generator. We have 15.3 MHz currently. And as you can see that the values are so low, can produce voltage, yes, but I'm not able to do anything here from an output point of view. This is very important. So what we need to achieve is going back to 15.3, what we need to achieve is, is having a value that we can use any other signal source than the signal generator is only to find the right value and to use an, um, an independent powered um, signal source we can use for our interference pattern. The interference of the signal generator is changing the way the DC is flowing through the system and because there is no direct connection um, to the uh, load, we cannot draw the amount of power the load would require to illuminate. The signal is interfered via the signal generator from the D, uh, of the DC voltage to the load and we have the possibility to change the values at a specific frequency and as you can see here we are at the moment at 300 microampere goes out I go to a tremendous amount of current now green is the output current yellow is uh, the voltage of the system blue is input current and they're both in the same division So we have at the moment here, it was about 28 milliampere. 28 milliampere on the output side. This is not right arranged for the load to illuminate uh, um, fully. You have seen that before. However, our, our voltage is a bit low, but I can change it here by changing the voltage on my DC power supply and can bring that back up. However, at some point it doesn't become visible anymore. I go down in my voltage and as you can see if I get down in the voltage of the DC power supply, I, the, D, the signal generator is taking over and over. Let me adjust it for you. I'm at the moment at 4.9 volt on the DC power supply and I consume less than 100 microampere on the DC 
power supply less than 100 microampere. Let me zoom in to demonstrate that I'm not, that, that I can see that. And it does not read any wattage, as you can see. Very important. That is 100 microampere currently. And I measure here 20 milliwatt output, which is not currently correctly aligned to that because that is only uh, unidirectional, so it can't use uh, um, both cycles of the wave. But I measure here 20 milliwatt and more, and that's a tremendous amount. Need to reduce it a bit, go a little bit up. Here. So that should give you a starting point where we have to look for, if you like, to produce an over-efficient energy system, starting with a non-related magnetic coil, not related magnetic flux, to a non-reciprocal coil system, feeding a signal into it have the signal very low. I can now increase the signal. And now I'm over the level. I can't have it anymore. I have to literally to use a lot of resistance. Now I have about 300, 400k in. So much. So it's a fine tuning exercise with the resistance to get that back up to that value. But I'm not measuring any current on the DC power supply. And that's fluctuating quite a lot, and I stop that for a moment, that you can see the lines here. At that combination, you see that the DC voltage is leading and the current is lacking. I would say it's a 19 degree, it's a very good alignment actually to it. However, we have very low DC voltage, but look at that. We have 36 milliampere on the current side, gives us 8 milliwatt to zero milliwatt on the input side and we have a high uh, resistance on the signal generator as well which is not connected to ground. That is a clear indicator that we are going in the right direction if you are designing a system like that. I hope that gives you a bit of an, of an understanding of how we have to go into the design phase of designing a next generation coil system. and. This is easy enough for you to replicate and no, you don't need any circuit diagrams. You just use a simple transistor, put it in and this coil is not connected to as a load. It's just forwarding the, the load. Technically, you, you're putting DC directly to the load, but you're using the signal as well to interfere to it. So your transistor becomes important to create this interference pattern between the Z load and um, the, the signal itself. Thank you.